12 sentences for the reading of the word this morning. Good morning. Happy Labor Day to everybody. Let's be today. Let's read Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, we ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit of God, Lord, bless your word. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I, in you, I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous and without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. I remember, O Lord, uh, your great mercy and love, for they are, they are from old, and remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways according to your love. According to your love, Lord, and remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for Pastor Bennett uh, sharing the word this morning, and we pray that you would just be with her. Anoint her message, Lord God. Anoint your word. seated for a minute. Let me give you a couple of announcements. A couple of very important things. Uh, just uh, I'm praying and hoping that it's not a, not a, I didn't cross any lines on this, but I call some churches and I ask them in, you know, New York and New Jersey and ask them to pray uh, for Ebony if they would be able to pray Ebony. And, and so I want you to know that. And please uh, keep Ebony in prayer. Her baby is in the hospital and God's going to do a miracle. It's going to be done. Okay? You watch. It's going to be to, it's, it's going to, be to give him glory and glory. So you, uh, the uh, second thing I had as an announcement here, next thing, is, is the Band of Brothers. It's going to be, I'm giving you enough time, October 19th and 20th. It would usually cost a lot of money to get there, but for us it's going to be $13 per month to stay overnight, which would usually be like a $100 trip with all these speakers. And she's going to be pretty nice to see that these come. We're going to be staying up at Pendell in Carlisle, PA. Anybody know where that's at? It's, that's where the uh, War College is. And they got a pretty good law stuff that's up there. Yeah, I think that. I think they do. So if you want to, please come and see me. If you want any details, see this on the back. It's uh, posted on the board back there. And take a look at that. Uh, also, I just want to say thank you to all those that went out and did the uh, picking, the uh, harvesting. We got some pictures online for all the harvesting of the potatoes kids out there, the, the, the children, and I think that was nice to see them uh, just that we were out doing work out there. It was an awesome thing. It's good to see Nikki back. It's good to see Vinny back. Amen. Amen. It's good to have that many here, okay? Yes. Brand new um, um, brand new kid on the block, but don't let it go that way. Let it go like she's family, okay? Let's stand and pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus and pray that Whatever we do and say, Lord, this morning would be to give you glory, God, and that you would just give all praise. And we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to love you, to come together and love you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Would you give the Lord a hand and cross your hands? Shake your hands. Amen. has changed, uh, or perhaps we don't have your information, please fill out the, the guest information uh, sheet. If you would like to receive text messages from Cindy for prayer requests and, and praise reports, please put your cell phone number on this sheet and, and put it in the offering, okay? And also, if we don't have your birthday, um, I noticed this week we have two birthdays. We're doing them by week now. Danny Gross's birthday is on the day. Yes. 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 It's good to just go 
Enjoy our family together on this last holiday. I was yeah. just going to add, Pastor Deb, if the weather would turn you know, really bad, we'll leave a message on the uh, altar stand so this public testimony will come up to the deck to put this thing on. Because we have a new softball equipment. Please bring it. Okay. Pick up the right. Anything else? Right. Well, anything else? Liz B, I'm bringing my...
hands, the ushers can come down, and we will pray and give thanks to God for everything that we will receive and everything that he's given unto us. So we bless him and we honor him this morning. Let us pray, everyone. Father in heaven, we just come before you this morning, and we want to thank you, first and foremost, for who you are. God, you are wonderful, and you are great. And we give you all the glory this morning as we receive your tithes and your offerings. We ask to, that you multiply it and you bless it. And we ask, God, that you continually give unto us as you always do, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you that we give back to do the work of your glory in this house and in this city. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Delayed us. 
know, if you travel 22 at all, like I try to, um, it is, it's a parking lot most mornings. And I love, I, I listen to the traffic and they'll, they'll say, yeah, 22 is moving along just fine and I'm parked. So I'm like, where exactly are they referring to, right? So there's unplanned accidents, unplanned. But my very favorite, and I wish I would have had the spin to bring it in one of those signs, but I would have loved to have brought in one of those those signs from the highway that say, expect delays. No. You know, like, let us just set your expectations right now because this is so bad that we're gonna put up a really big sign that says, expect to be delayed. So, you know, maybe that's a sign that they're, they're trying to set our expectations, you know. But delays, delays are interruptions in the life that we had planned, mm. right? The life that, as we plan it, as we, as we hope, right? Yes. So why is it so hard for us to, to wait, to be delayed? You know, it's, it's kind of part of our culture now. And I was reading about uh, instant gratification. Oh. You know, that means like wanting it right now. Um, there were some quotes on the internet from some movie stars that instant gratification isn't fast enough, you know? <laughs> But, uh, you know, they say that the Gen Xers, you know, the, the children of the baby boomers, like children of people my age, I, I know, I, I'm not that old, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, I have four Gen Xers, and, and I think about my kids, and they were raised on the computer, you know, from like fourth grade, they were on the computer as, as the internet came along, you know, they, they came a long way with it. But, but so have we, you know, regardless of our age, some of us like the technology, and we too, you know, we too get used to it. So, you know, we hear a song that we like, you know, we don't go out Download shopping it. record stores to find where can we possibly find this, you know. Uh, no, we download it instantly, you know, on our iPhone or our iPad. Uh, we we want to communicate with somebody at seven in the morning. We send a text, I don't even have to call Sammy. He's right there, and he replies back instantly, instantly. Um, when taking tests on a, a, with a Berean, I did a lot of self-study. We could take the paper test and, and send it in and have them grade it, or, oh my goodness, why, why wait a week? You know, you can take it right online, and it comes right back and gives you that, that instant gratification. There's a pass, you know? So we're used to things being fast-paced. We're, that, that's our mode right now. We don't even want to wait seconds. Seconds. How many people complain their computer is too slow? Too slow. No, we, we want everything fast and faster. You know, we're spoiled. We're spoiled. Delayed gratification, the other side of that coin. You know, who wants to wait on purpose? Who wants to wait on purpose? Amen? How about for you know, it used to be, you know, my parents, they would save up. Yeah. They wanted a, a new refrigerator, they'd save up, and when you had the money, that's when you went and got it. You know, but today, you know, Sears catalog, my dad worked at Sears. <laughs> but, you know, today, what do we do? We buy it on credit. You know, what do I, oh, but they give you the credit before you even make up your mind what you want, right? Or if you can't get a credit line, you rent it. Oh my gosh, people pay like 10 times as much if they had paid for it in cash. That breaks my heart. They rent it, that's the only because you have to have it. You have to have it like right away, right away. I need it, I need it. You know, how about waiting for marriage? <laughs> I, I talked to a friend last week that uh, worked for Sacred Heart. She's on a medical she said she had this 16-year-old girl call her up totally distressed and crying. And she's like, honey, what, what's wrong? What's the problem? She goes, I'm 16 and I'm not pregnant yet. What's wrong with me? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, but it's so sad. What happened to waiting? You know, waiting, saving yourself for, for the man and the woman who would have a baby, who would raise the baby together. So that the, the child would have the benefit of a father and a mother. Wow. The wait for anymore. How about waiting for healing? Oh my goodness, as soon as we get the slightest headache, headache we, we're self-medicating. We can't wait for something to heal. You 
know, and yet God made our body so beautiful. You know, last week Jeff bought me a, a beautiful new set of knives that I was being ever so careful in cutting up pieces, and I went to, to peel the pit out, and I had the knife in my hand, and it broke back, and the whole knife went into my finger. No stitches this time, though. But it's a beautiful thing. Like a week later, you can hardly see because Amen. God heals and brings brings them, that flesh together again. We can't even understand how that happens. Amen. How does that right. happen? But God, God, God wants to heal so many of us. But we medicate before before we even give Him a chance, right? Well. Delayed gratification denotes a person's ability to wait to obtain something that he or she wants. The intellectual attribute is called impulse control. Can we control ourselves long enough? You know, willpower, self-control, patience. These are not words that are, are common in our language anymore. No one wants to hear self-control. Save yourself. Wait. Well, there's some things that you just can't control the timing of. And Jack and I will testify to this one. Our, our youngest daughter had our, our eighth grandchild in July, the end of July. Oh, my. Man. And, you know, I was thinking about it. There you go. You're, you're waiting for a child to be born. And where do they send you? Again, they set your expectations. Go to the waiting room. This is where you will go and you will wait. You go to the waiting room. Did you ever think about that? And we waited, and we waited, and she was in labor for 40 hours, 40 hours. And all we could think about is the baby, the baby, I'm not, not that we don't love our daughter, but you know, the longer it goes, you think, is the baby going to be okay? Is it going to be able to, to, to breathe when it comes out? Is it being damaged in such a large, long you know, process of being born? But God knows exactly you know, how he made our bodies, the, the, the beauty, the miracle of birth and how that baby is formed and transformed, you know, in the womb and, and it comes and, and it comes. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Let's see, in Psalm, you don't have to bring this up, but Psalm 62, 5 says, My soul, wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. Yes! You know, there's so many things that want to put expectations on us, but can, can we wait on Him? And, yes. and expect from him. So, let's get to the Bible. How about in Jesus' day? You know, what were the delays like there? What did waiting mean there? You know, they didn't have highways or, or super highways. You know, what, what was a, a traffic jam? Did they even have any? And uh, what can we learn from God's word? You might think, well, that's so ancient old. You know, they didn't have computers. They didn't have technology. But... They even have delays, you know. Mm -hmm. Have to be so, so, uh, so simple, so simple. So we're going to start uh, this morning. We're going to look at two stories and how how there were delays. Okay, and these are common stories you've heard before. I just want you to look at them from a different angle today. Okay, Amen. a different door. We're going to come in this side. Door. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to look at Luke eight. Luke 8, starting at verse 41. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler at the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet, and he begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? Now imagine this. You know, it's kind of condensed here, but Jesus had been preaching. There was a huge multitude, a huge multitude. And, and when Jairus came up to him and said, Lord, come, 
come to my house, you know, my, my daughter, my daughter. Well, Jesus started going, and, and all the people, the huge multitude started following him, right? And then what happens? A delay in traffic. <laughs> Here it is, it's the delay. So the woman with the issue of blood comes up and touch, touches Jesus' cloak. Now look at it through, we look at these stories as separate stories, don't we? We preach it from, you know, the little girl being healed and the woman being healed. But look for a minute through Jairus' eyes. Here he is, and he's, oh, hallelujah, you know, the son of God, or whoever he thought he was, this, this man who had power, who was his only hope to, to save his only daughter. He's coming with me. He's coming with me. He's coming, he's coming to my house. He's coming to my house, and... Oh, come on now. This woman with the issue of blood, she's had this issue for as long as my daughter's been alive. And today, this minute, she picks to come up and interrupt and stop everything. Oh, my heavens. Why, Lord? Why? Why the delay? Hmm. Why the delay? Imagine how he felt. You know, do you ever feel like that? Do you ever look around and you have so much hope and expectation in your heart? God, God can do this for me. I know he can do this for me. And then he doesn't. There's a delay. You don't know why. In this case, he knew why. But there he is. Oh, now he's helping this woman. Why couldn't he just let her be? Let her be healed and let's go on with it. You know, who touched? Who touched Jesus' cloak? Only about 100 people who were standing around us. You know, why did he even have to acknowledge it? Why couldn't he just keep going? But no, Jesus stopped. And he was attending to the woman with the issue of blood. So what happens with Jairus then? But what happens with you? Do you get discouraged? And you think, oh, well, I'm not good enough. Or maybe he said that, or maybe I thought that, or maybe I read a scripture that led me to believe that he might be able to help me, but will he really? Will he really? So we know, we know what happens. Verse 49. We know that he healed the woman with the issue of blood. Just her touch, touching his cloak. But while he was still speaking, okay, he told the woman, go in peace. Some, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the teacher now. Now it's too late. You delayed too long. Don't even bother him. Don't bother the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. Amen. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John the father and the mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her, but he said, do not weep, she's not dead, but sleeping. <clears throat> and they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside. Put them all outside, and he took her by the hand and called, saying, little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately. Her spirit returned, and she arose immediately. Hallelujah. One of the other versions, it said, at that moment, her life, her life returned. Her yes. life returned. Amen. Amen? Amen. Because, see, Jesus waited. He waited until it was so bad that they ridiculed him and said, she's dead. Are you kidding me? She's been dead. She's been dead for hours. Who knows how long it took to travel to, to Jairus' house with this whole multitude. But, but Jesus waited. There was that delay, and it wasn't on, by accident. It was on purpose. Expect delays. Expect delays, because when Jesus gets there, then it's even more powerful. Amen. 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 There's no Amen. doubt that today we can, we can read that he raised Jairus' daughter Amen. from the dead. Amen? Amen. So how much more can he do for us? And these are dramatic. It makes the story turn into a dramatic, faith-increasing experience. Not just something yes. mundane that happened as they, as they were going along the way. 
Amen. 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 So there's another story that's even more amazing. John 11. Whoa. John Whoa. 11. We're going to start out. And again, here's another story that we know well. John 11, 1 through 7. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed Jesus with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When G I think this, this next couple of verses are the most amazing to me in the Bible. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that God, you, Son of God, may be glorified through it. Praise God. Here's, here's the verse. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go. Isn't that just the reaction that, that you have today? You get, you get a call, someone's in the hospital, it's serious, you need, you need to get here right away, and you say, well, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go down to the shore for a couple days, and when I come back, I'll stop by. That's basically what Jesus said. It, it says over and over, it, it, it builds in the Bible what a beautiful relationship Jesus had with his family with each, each and every one of them, with Martha and Mary and with Lazarus. But Lazarus is so sick, Lord, you must come right now. And he says, no, I'm going to stay here for a couple of days. It's, it's totally illogical. And I want you to think about, it, it's logical to God. Amen. It's logical to God. And so many times we go through things and we say, this doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense to our minds, to our flesh, to our human minds. Amen. But to God, God thinks differently than we think. Amen. We're not going to go through this whole story in the interest of time, but you know what happens in verse 21. Martha, Jesus finally comes after the delay, and, and Martha says to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had only been here. In verse 32, when Mary sees them, Mary came out and she says, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Do you think they had talked? Do you think they had cried and commiserated? You know, in those days, Lazarus at this point was in the tomb for four days. There was a whole house full of people mourning with them. You know, Lord, if you had been here, if you had only been here, Lord. You know, how many times do we say that? Lord, if you had only been there, you know, it would have been different. It would have been different, Lord. And we think he's not there. But he has, he has another, another plan, another plan. Let's look at verses 38 through 44. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, Lord, by this time, there's a stench. There's a stench, for he's been dead for four days. For four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Amen. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always yes. hear me. Yes, Lord. But because of the people who are standing by, because of the people that are, are listening and overhearing, are standing by, I said this, that they may believe. That you said. Now, when he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died.
came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said, Loose him, loose him, and let him go. Amen. Loose him and let him go. <clears throat> See, this time, it was definitely on purpose. Jesus expected this delay. He not only expected it, he planned it. He wrote the sign. Let's expect delays. Why? Because he wanted, he wanted there to be a stench. He wanted there to be a stench so that the Son of God could be glorified. He talked to his father about it. He said, Father, that, that, that they would understand, that they would believe in me and glorify you. Not me, but you, that you would be glorified. And how many of us are waiting? How many of you are waiting for some big healing, for some big lightning to come down from the sky, right? But Jesus, in the waiting, in the waiting, Jesus is healing you. In the waiting, just like that baby in the womb, the, the Lord is preparing you. There is a spiritual birth, a spiritual birth, a spiritual renewal that he wants for each and every one of you. But it's going to take time. It's not going to be instant. It's not going to be uh, instant gratification. You're going to have to be patient because in the spiritual life, he is healing you. He is going to birth you. He wants you to know, even if there's the biggest stench in the world, that's the biggest testimony for God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The greater the stench, the greater the testimony. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, so what am I saying to you today? That, that God, God is working in you. And you may think he's far away. You, know, you might be like Jairus and you might think, oh my gosh. Look, look he's working with that, that woman who for 12 years, she's gone to everybody and their brother. And now at this moment, she has to come to Jesus. But praise God. Praise God because it all... It all glorifies, it all glorifies God. There's a moment in the waiting when life returns. Yes. Just like that little girl, at that moment, life returns to her yes. body. And you don't have to be dead in the body for God to bring you back. You know, it's somewhere in here, Jesus has this conversation with Martha, and she says, you know, he says, don't you believe? And she says, well, yeah, I believe. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe in eternal life. And how many of us are like that? We say, yes, I'm here in church because I believe. I believe that, that someday, if I'm, if I'm good enough, I'll get into heaven. But Jesus is saying to you today, I'm going to help you right now. You might not feel it. But I'm working in you right now if you let me. If you let me. If you ask him. What were the common denominators here? They all had to come and ask Jesus, Amen. do this work. Help my daughter. Help my brother. And yep. he did. Yep. But it takes time. He's going to help. He's going to answer those prayers. Amen. Thank you. And in the waiting, in the pain, in, in the going to the hospital, he is forming our hearts. He's forming your soul. Yes. He's Amen. healing you. Amen. He's taking you to some place that... You can't even imagine what's on the other side of that delay. When that sign comes down and there's a new road. You can't even imagine. You can't even imagine what's there. So why? Why did Jesus do this? If we look at Luke 8.50. Luke 8.50. Come on, back to the scriptures we looked at before. But when Jesus heard it, he answered, when they said that the daughter was dead, he answered saying, do not be afraid, only believe and she will be made well. Thank you know, in perfect me. faith, there is no fear. Wow. In perfect no faith, there is no fear. None. The more you fear, the less you believe. Yes. Amen. The more you fear, the less you believe. But yes. But in perfect faith, there is no fear. And this is what Jesus... See, here's the common thread through all these stories. Uh, that they may believe. John 11, 42. <coughs> 11, 42. 
He says, and I know that you always hear me, Jesus speaking to his father, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. That they may believe. What did Jesus want? Before he left, he wanted, he wanted them to believe in him. The same thing he wants from you today. Before he went to that cross, he wanted to know, do you believe in what I'm going to do for you? Amen. Amen. Nothing's changed. He wants the same things from you. John 11, 14 and 15. John 11, 14 and 15. And Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad. This wasn't any accident. I'm, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you might believe. Nevertheless, let us go, go to him. Amen. Now what is he saying here? I'm glad for your sakes that I wasn't there wasn't there. What would have happened? What would have happened if he had gone right away? No excuse. If he hadn't delayed? No excuse. Some of the commentaries say that because Jesus is the Prince of Life, nothing ever died in his presence. Whoa. Whoa. Nothing dies in the presence of the Prince of Life. Whoa. So, so he went because he wanted Lazarus to die. He wanted them to believe. He wanted, he was glad for their sake that they weren't, that he wasn't there. Thank you, Father. That's deep. Thank you, Father. Isn't that the opposite of how we think about it? Yes, it is. Thank you, man. The opposite. Our thinking is so off. So off. And God wants to make it so on, so bright. He wants you to understand today. I'm glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. I'm glad that you know that maybe you spent time under a bridge, or I, I'm glad that, that that prayer wasn't answered right away. Thank you. Right. You know, to me, maybe he's saying, I'm glad that it took 10 years for your son to get clean, and and you know what? I'm glad that, that I wasn't there and didn't answer the prayer and that he had that motorcycle accident, because I could have intervened. I could have intervened. But I'm glad, because even in the worst of circumstances, in the worst of circumstances, He's going to be there. He's going to be there to give you the strength. Amen. When we ask God, why did this happen? Why did we have this loss? He wants you to believe. Look at Lazarus in, in John 12, 9 